Welcome to Thrones and Scones in the middle of another week for your weekday morning podcast. Or you can you could listen to it in the afternoon. You could listen to it at night. Just know that you're you're a traitor for doing so and that we don't really love you as much as the people tuning in each and every AM. But hey, if you can live with that, so can we. We chat Game of Thrones over breakfast. Tony, Hans, and Jeremy in with you today hitting season two, episode three, What is Dead May Never Die. And mini lemon poppy seed there was confusion earlier in the week uh i I don't know whose fault it was it probably definitely wasn't mine um but uh (laughs) today it is in fact mini lemon poppy seed it's also wednesday happy hump day folks yeah and so i think it's funny because we we are uh somewhat inept at posting the correct scones on instagram but hans (laughs) has been the one that's been consistent about that and then he jumps the gun monday and is like no 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 it's mine it's like, and then he's like, oh, I absolutely three. never said it was mine. Yeah, no, I said it was his. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it was, it was rough. But hey, um, yeah. So here, what is dead may never die. They are not slowing down. They they know they're like, all right, we got these people. We don't need to just set up characters and let them roll. They keep introducing characters left, right, and center. Yeah. Do you want to hit the wiki? Uh, I I I did. I don't have it pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> so if we if I could if I could rewind a second stall, and maybe get Jeremy, a comment stall. on this, uh, they're introducing characters left, right, and center. <laughs> All these characters are being introduced. Um, that's what <laughs> you were so good the other day at making up for my shortcomings. Yeah, no, that's, they, that's they what you slow. had today. Yeah, so uh, I'll just say for for this episode, um, I enjoyed this one better uh, than than yesterday. Um, um, I felt like the the flow of it was better. I feel definitely feel like we get more, especially at, um, with Craster's creep, we kind of left some things unsaid specifically with John, uh, seeing Craster, uh, carry the, the baby boy out and, and he kind of ends with this unknown removal, this creature walking away. Um, which as we know is a white Walker. Um, I think like that's kind of like a big, uh, part of this next episode as well, because John's struggling with that from a standpoint of like doing the right thing. Um, he's always on that moral high ground, um, and then finding out that uh, Lord Mormont is like aware of this. So I think that's that was kind of like one of the best parts of the show for me. For anyone who does need a little little refresher, uh, I finally got it. I'm kind of on top of the game here. The plot for What Is Dead May Never Die. At the Red Keep, Tyrion plots three alliances through the promise of marriage. <laughs> what? How is that going to work? <laughs> Catelyn arrives in the Stormlands to forge an alliance of her own, but King Renly, his new wife Marjorie, or as I like to call her, um, I can't believe it's not Butter Tyrell, and her brother <laughs> Loras Tyrell have other plans in mind. Balon Greyjoy maps out his strategy of attack, while at Winterfell, Lewin tries to decipher Bran's dreams. Or is it Danny's dreams? Uh, it's Danny. Jeremy. Yeah, Danny. Dan. Dreams. Yeah, Dan. sweet, sweet, sweet baby Dan. Um, yeah, and to be honest, like Bran is boring in this episode. Just I still, I think. And so the one comment where he he's being told, you know, there there's a time when there were dragons and there were people that had the ability to do things. Um, and he's like, you know, I tried as the hundreds before me, and none of us could do it. I'm like, well, it's because you guys didn't have the abilities to do it, right? Like so. Mm. I don't know, and I don't know why he's trying to undersell that to Bran at all. Or Danny. Well, it's so it's, and it's more talked about in the books, I think. But magic is very much a force that has gone away from this world for the most right. part, and it is the dragons returning that is bringing this bringing resurgence. So Ma- Maester Lewin is not wrong in the sense that this stuff, for as far as everyone knows, is actually gone, and people aren't yet putting the pieces together that it's coming back into the fold. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I like that. Um, yeah, we so we open up as as the plot says. As I tried to lead into um, poorly, more character development. We get Marjorie Tyrell and we get Brian of Tarth in this episode. Let's be honest. The best part of the show is when she spears Tyrell, right? When she puts him on his ass. That is yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I think the part uh, where Renly spears. Loris Tyrell. Is a bit, is, is well, a we, we 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 don't get that in this episode exactly, but we get kind of a. My notes specifically say for for the jugglies portion, of course. I'm just trying to be thorough. My yeah. notes specifically say man on man action question mark, and then it goes nope kinda, and then I have a quote that says no bone my sister instead. 
<laughs> yeah, we do. We we do. Marjorie does come in, and she's very woke. Marjorie is, you know, she's she's here. We were talking yesterday about, you know, love doesn't necessarily have a place in these high chess game marriages. And Marjorie's just like, yeah, whatever. You want my brother in here? Let's do it. Come on. Yeah. You wanna? You you want you want me to pretend I'm him? I can do that too. Like she's super <laughs> into whatever here. Marjorie is is thirsty for the fame here. I think. Yeah, yeah. She, I was going to ask you what you think about her, because I think in, in the episodes to come, we get a really cool quote, like good line from her um, about kind of what her aspirations are, and you learn a little bit more. But just, just given at this episode, what what do you think? Like, obviously she knows, like, she, she talk about talking about Jeremy's uh, question last time. Uh, I'm starting to think there's no love in this marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, it is. It's just unfortunately with the wrong sibling. Yeah, you know, yeah. as so many problems in this as so show many problems from. in this world of thrones. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, there's certainly no love between Renly and Marjorie, who, by the way, and again, I know timelines are all skewed. Uh, met and got married real damn fast. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah, Renly, okay. Renly now trying to put himself in a situation where he's vying for the throne. Um, Catelyn's there, uh, trying to kind of. I, when she comes in and sees the you know the little skirmish or whatever, it's funny because I think Marjorie like already is kind of like disdain for her. Um, doesn't seem to really warmly want her here. Um, and then of course uh, Renly's like, oh nope, we're cool. Come let's walk. Let's go hang out for a little bit. But then also tells her just like, oh okay, go away. Uh, I I should yeah. want to get done. I yeah I don't I don't think they do a good job. I think of laying out why Catelyn is is there in the sense of why not go um I mean I know that her, the Rob has kind of said you need to go get me this this house I need to have the the ships what is it like a hundred does he have a hundred ships I don't know if or he wants I don't know if there are any ships for Renly oh it's right the men it's, yeah it's a hundred thousand men hundred thousand men, right? men yeah so I don't know um yeah Catelyn Stark and it's the next episode where I really have a tr- trouble understanding what her purpose is, where she's at right now. But uh, for the moment, there are not many episodes where I like what Catelyn's doing. She has my favorite quote in this episode, which is, you know, Loris Terrell being this cocky little prick coming out like, oh, he's hiding behind his mother's script, blah, blah, blah. And she's just, you know, my son is fighting a war, not playing at one. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just like throwing shade and Brentley's super into it. I love this, like... Like this, it doesn't make sense, but I love this cocky, confident King Renly who's just like, ah, oh, yes, way to, way to backhand my boyfriend, you saucy lady. Um, and he's, he's super into it. It was cool. Yeah. And I, I'm, I, I agree. I like, uh, I like all that. I, I like that he makes Brienne of Tarth the uh, member of the King's Guard and all that. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Which, and this is just uh, because Sans, I don't think you would know this. It's, it's a step too far in the books, Renly's King's Guard is not called the King's Guard. Could you possibly guess what it might be called? No. No. Uh, it's the Rainbow Guard. Oh, of course. <laughs> and they yeah. wear rainbow cloaks. Uh, think, and it's just, it's a bit much. Yeah, I think that was, uh, I think that was fair to keep that out of the show. <laughs> I'm trying to remember her armor. I don't think it was at all. When I don't was think that- she had I don't think she had that? a cloak of anything that was rainbow at all. I was trying to remember the show if they did that at all. No, they didn't do it. When yeah. was that book written? 2010? Uh, 2011? No. no, no, no. Book two? No. Uh, I'll look it up, but I think it's like 2002. Okay. Okay. Oh, maybe that's when the show was. I'm sorry. Yeah. Never mind. I'm looking it up. Someone take the reins. Oh, so let's go on and talk about, about Theon. Um, 1998. Okay. Yeah, wow. So that makes more sense because i don't i don't know if that would have necessarily if that would have if that would have flown today (laughs) um so theon yeah yeah so he's got got big moments in this episode yeah exactly so we talked about prior about his loyalty it's about how he's you know calls rob brother um even says it you know in the presence of his dad and is kind of like chastised for that um it's kind of a quick flip when i think he realizes um, I think he's struggling with trying to be supportive of the family that he doesn't know, that he really 
really struggle with and then you know and wanting to kind of earn the honor and earn the respect of his dad back especially given the fact that his sister is just such a badass right now and is getting to have all these ships and gets to be play a bigger role with a future war that they're that they're setting up um i just uh what did you think of the whole baptism so yeah theon's story i understand it I get, and he's got that one good moment where he's like, you know, I don't know what you want from me. Right. You gave me away. I'm coming back. Why right. do you? I, I get where he's coming from, uh, but Theon's my least favorite part about this episode. I don't care for yep. him. I yep. again, it's too quick a flip. Yep. I don't understand it. Yep. Like I get the the familial pressure, the fact that all he wants to do is make this guy proud. Um, I just don't think he'd go about it in the way that he actually is, or, or they haven't set that up to be true at this point. And for the baptism. Um, unless I'm wrong, in the books, it's a very violent procedure. Right, and so this is this is just <laughs> some water. Let's do it, right? Yeah, I think they basically almost drown you in the sea for right. your actual drown god baptism. Well, I think that I'm... would make sense given their what what's dead can never die kind of thing. Like that to yeah. me, that makes that would make more sense than just splashing a little water on you. It's so I, I want to hit just because this it's a pretty quick topic today. I have a. a Question for you. We are now introduced to, I think, the final god that we're going to meet, the drowned god. Oh, I'm sorry. There's there's one more. We can talk about him for the purposes of this, which is, uh, and we've been introduced to him by Sirio, the god of death, or the red god, as Jack and Hagar will call him later down the road in Braavos. Um, so we've got the red god, the many-faced god, whatever you want to call him. You've got uh, the lord of light, Azor Ahai, uh, or whatever the hell his name is. Um, the drowned god, which I think are pretty much exclusively just to the to the Iron Islands. You've got the seven, or referred to as the new gods, and then you've got the old gods, the trees. Um, I'm I got a two pronged question for you here. I want you guys to pick what religion you think uh, is best descripted or depicted in the show thus far, and I want you to let me know your thoughts. Do you think any of them are real, or do you think all of them are real? Uh, or do you think that they're all just kind of like uh, c- constructs that you know medieval cultures would come up with to explain certain things? Shit. So, Tony, I just want to say, you and I lately, we have been straight on sync. Oof. This was Wait, actually that. going to be my topic for tomorrow's episode. No shit. Oh, yeah, like almost, <laughs> almost exactly. So. So I'm glad I'm not blindsiding you with it then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts? So I was thinking about it a bit, and it's 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 tough because I don't, I don't know if we've gotten a ton uh, yet, and I'm not super familiar as far as like I haven't read a lot about these guys. I'm really only going mm-hmm. off of what has been shown in the show yeah. itself. I'm kind of, and I can't. I don't know if it's just because of the characters that I like. I'm kind of partial to the old gods. Yeah, like just because I think I because I like the Starks, I like the North, I like that whole like the mystery mystery of all of that seems really cool, and I think I just like the way it's written more than anything. Um, yeah. and, and the trees are super creepy and all that stuff, and like it's 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 interesting. Um, from what I've been given in the show, uh, that Lord of Light seems pretty scary to me, <laughs> like because really, other than the witch that we saw, um, in essos with uh you know with daenerys and all that stuff happened like yes she we assume that she had some powers but really all the stuff that happened could have been explained other ways in my opinion like yes we know that she kind of poisoned him and she she kept him alive but as far as from a mystical power standpoint other than the tent scene where just shit was going crazy and a lot of noise was happening and obviously something weird was going on um, it could have just been her with baking sheets going (laughs) yeah because they said we don't get to see the baby the baby could you know daenerys could have just miscarried there was a lot of stress a lot of other stuff going on and we don't get to see it they do say that the baby was somewhat monstrous but daenerys does have you know, we know Daenerys is like dragon's blood and all this stuff, and they they yeah. say it more like the baby came out with dragon scales and and stuff like that. So that could actually be explained through the Targaryen lineage versus this witch having anything to do with that. You know, and Fair then uh, I I think <coughs> other than Daenerys being fireproof, which is obviously some fantasy elements, like this Melisandre person is really the first person we see to actually use mystical type powers or like or spells or or all this stuff and we are 
there's not much to explain off some of the things she does. Uh, and whether she just has powers and kind of is writing it off to this god, or whether she is truly, like, channeling these godly powers or something, uh, I don't know. I It's hard not to lean towards that just from what we've been given so far. Yeah, actually, Jeremy. so I think, so, Laura, like, that's kind of where I was starting, just from the show of what we've been given. With the seven, I mean you don't really get a representation as well, especially with powers and kind of like fortune. Um, obviously in the next episode, we're going to see a little bit more for the God of the light. Um, and also I feel like, uh, it's, it's probably the most believable in the sense that we've seen now representation. And also we've seen a following that does something like right with this god there seems to be more action and i think so that makes you kind of get a sense of there's definitely with the whole drowned god um i don't feel like besides our our like i said with theon and the whole ceremony you don't really see the role of that deity yet yeah i think that it's there's this very cool thing in the show in the books where they're trying to hit every element of why religions are founded or why people might believe in this that and the other thing the drowned god i think is very much we're trying to explain the harshness of our situation we're Mm -hmm, trying to mm -hmm. to make something good out of it where it's like oh this is something to be striven strived Mm -hmm. holy shit uh striven it's a good word go with (laughs) it something to be striven after we striven to do this (laughs) and uh (laughs) strove i strove it strivivity um so people look toward it, you know, they're looking to that. The Starks, the old gods and stuff like that, we know that there's something to it, but I don't yeah. think it's a god thing. Like later on we find out that they're, you know, unless you're considering like the children of the forest gods and stuff like that, there there are more mortal explanations, but it still forces beyond what anybody currently understands. Yeah, right, um, right. When we're looking at the god of death, I think that's a very practical thing. That's like very much... Um, Karma. That's, Karma, you know, yep. black and white. Yep. Jockin gets into it in Arya later in the season where it's like, okay, yeah, you saved us. You took three lives from the god of death. You got to give three lives back. We got it. It's all about balance. It's, it's very black and white, very literally. Uh, and, you know, it's the house of black and white. It's, it's not subtle. The Lord of Light is the religion that I think is true. It's the religion that I think is actually happening. Mm -hmm. We see, and it's discussed more in the books, Melisandre's doing a lot of parlor tricks right now. Not a whole lot of magic. Mm -hmm. She does later, and when she sees it, and this is in the show, it surprises her when she sees um, Beric and Darien being resurrected. Like, it throws her. Like, it, it, it really makes her rethink things. And it explains the Daenerys thing, too, because there is this theory that... Stannis is not the chosen one. And I think that's pretty well established later on down the road. The theory is that Daenerys is the is the chosen one and that they were reading signals wrong, stuff like that. Uh, and as for the seven, I think that's that's like the gods that the capitalist society or whatever, the economic right. the society Greek, of Westeros. The Greek kind of thing. Yeah, and we see that with the greed later on and mm-hmm. then basically tearing down the whole church with, uh, with that storyline that I think all of us talked we don't really care for with the... Uh, what's his name? Um, the High Sparrow. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah way, so way down the road, but yeah. Just to, to piggyback off your point that you just made with this, uh, and I know we're we're really talking ahead now, but you're saying that Daenerys is, is you know, really the theory is that Daenerys is the chosen one and that, that things got mixed up. Uh, so then is that, do you think that's why Daenerys is not harmed by fire? If she's the chosen one from the God of Light versus just because she's, you know, she she thinks it's because she's the dragon or dragon's blood and all this stuff. You can't be hurt by fire. But her brother is. Mm-hmm. And technically they should have the same blood, right? It's true. So then uh, do you think that's why she's not hurt by the fire is because she's the chosen one from the Lord of Light who really is the Lord of Fire? Mm-hmm. And he and yes. that's really the protected protecting protection. I, yeah, I think that point could absolutely be made and argued very well. Yeah, I think that's very good. Uh, yeah. Although, I, I, got me. I would just I would pick if I was picking one, I would just pick the the old gods because they seem very non invasive. I don't have to do much. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> go hang out at just, a tree every once yeah. in a while. Creepy Show some tree. Respects to but... a, the creepy tree. Yeah, but there's not seven different people that I have to remember. There aren't candles that I have to light. I don't have to drown my family. Uh, it's you know it's, it's <laughs> yeah, better. Yeah, that's true. We don't get much. Like Jeremy said, we don't get much on the seven. I feel like in the show. Yeah, that's. <coughs> I mean, comp- compared to what we get from just from the lore from the books, it's, it's. But again, I think that makes sense because 
I feel like the Lord of the Light is the one that they want you to get the most from in the sense of see the power and all those things and kind of... And I actually sure. agree. I think Daenerys in the beginning is... Obviously, I don't think you appreciate that as early in the show we are now, but I feel like that's where it's leading to. Yeah. I just want to say I've been a little down on this season. I know in episode one and two, I think episode three really picked it up for me. I really... Uh, I'm start, This is where I start to really enjoy season two. And how could you not? Because the one god we haven't touched on, the god of tits and wine, Tyrion <laughs> Lannister, uh, round two of just cleaning house. Cleaning house. With <laughs> Maester Pycelle. I love that he's playing with like the circumcision device or the, you know, making eunuch. And he's, because he's sitting there like doing the whole clamp thing with, uh, when he's in the room talking to Pycelle. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, I thought that was a compass. Oh, really? Oh, I thought it, it, well, I had like a whole thing for putting something in it. Maybe it's just a little. I'll have, to, oh, I'll have to look that up. It could be. Right? So then he's, like, talking about it. He's like, oh, I'll make you a eunuch or whatever. We'll remove him. And then Shit, yeah, you're probably he's doing right. that. <laughs> then, yeah, it's funny. And then he takes the beard, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Lannister! I've always served Lannister! <laughs> yeah. And again, why, if this dude's so agile, why isn't he just, like, flipping out of this thing? <laughs> exactly. Just throat punches left, right, and center. And he yeah, he j- jumps out. up, jumps up, scissor kicks. <laughs> <laughs> I love the moment where Tyrion pays the, the girl for everything she's gone through and then, like, looks at Pycelle again, gives her another coin. He's like, I, you've, like, been, really? you've been through some you've shit. You've been through some it. shit, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so best moments, what are you thinking? Give, That's give my a... favorite moment, by a mile. Which moment? Uh, oh, Tyrion. Tyrion and Pycelle. Oh, Tyrion. Yeah. Okay. Tyrion yeah, yeah, Pycelle, totally. yeah, totally. I, I, will, I marked down two favorites, so I will hit it real quick. Um, the other one I'm, I'm wanting to love so much is Arya's moment. Before everything happens with, with Lamy and, and the invasion and Yorin, um, this is Arya's most vulnerable moment in the show and it's her turning point. It's her actual turning point. Um, so much so that, you know, Yorin basically spells out this this thing that Arya will carry for seasons to come with her list mm-hmm. that she rattles yeah. off each night before bed. That's um, cool. And he, she's just basically like, how do, how do you do it? How do you sleep? And uh, and she's understanding now the realities of the world in a different way than, than Sansa picked up on those realities, but in a, in a traumatic way nonetheless, and just kind of really establishing what she is going to be and, and what her purpose is moving forward. Sure. And can we just talk about the uh, intellect, again, of some of these Westeros <laughs> inhabitants? Okay? <laughs> so... We know that the soldiers are going around killing all of uh, Robert Baratheon's bastards. And we know that they figured, or at least Ned figured, the people who figured this out based it off of hair color, right? And then when they're going out to kill Gendry, Arya says, you already got him, and points to a little blonde-haired kid again. (laughs) And you just assume that they believed her, I guess, because he had the helmet by him. But like... They there wasn't any quite they this this same group of people pretty much probably went around and killed all the bastards. So the one thing I will I do think it's a problem, but the one thing I'll give the show and why I think they're trying to justify it is it's not the gold cloaks who show up. Okay. It's the Lan it's the Lannister force, gotcha. and they say that That's like point. that they're coming that you know the gold cloaks had come to them for aid, and so now yeah. they're riding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but you still think that that point would be yeah no one because they're like, gonna say like well what's he look like or well, you know they're gonna, and the, the yeah. first thing they're gonna say is gonna oh it's gonna be a dark haired boy like that's not gonna come up yeah and, yeah, who, but I think and he's an armorer's apprentice and that Lamy's like this tiny little <laughs> little long haired blonde kid yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know that when they when they when they harass him and they end up getting the, the knowledge of that he went to the wall and then to take the black and then of course then they they focus on the helmet so but the helmet has literally been with him with uh, with Gendry the entire time and no one else and they just let this little girl say that and everyone just accepts it so I don't know well I think why would anybody turn yeah, there was no Gendry incentive. over at that point. And like they're getting them off their case. If if the Lannisters get convinced that oh yeah, Gendry was him and he's dead, it's done. Nobody gains anything by. But the, I know. But I thought they were saying like you know we'll give you, uh, what are they talk when a reward? A reward. Yeah, I thought that. Sure, that but was now they're prisoners. First. Yeah, that's right. They're not gonna get a reward, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I get. But that was a pretty cool fight scene, though. 
Oh God, yeah. Yorin, <laughs> that I hate crossbows. Takes so long to reload. Yeah, that was my that was my favorite <laughs> yeah. part. Super lucky. Badass. There's only one dude one with the crossbow. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a heart shot too. It's like left upper chest wall, and it's, I'm like done. Yeah, yeah. That dude, was, that was pretty badass. I like that. I like that they introduced. I like both the introductions they did with like like we said with Brandon and Marjorie. So I was kind of debating whether that fight scene or just kind of the the additional characters were kind of my highlight. But it's all I'm also a little biased though because Marjorie doesn't probably ever actually do anything that makes her that good of a character to me, but man, she's an attractive lady. So she <laughs> is. <laughs> just to close out the good bad and the juggly for today. It was our it was our only bits and I wasn't mad at it. It was solid. Um if you guys would like to hit us up on social media. You can find us at Thrones and Scones on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Keep up with us at thronesandscones.com. And before we bail on you, of course, the baked goods need to take front and center stage here. Hans has the scone today. I'm not lying. I'm not wrong. I'm right for once. And uh, what, what, what do you got? Lemon poppy seed? Min- mini lemon yeah, poppy seed. Yeah. Mini lemon poppy seed from uh, Metcalf's grocery store. And they are okay. I'm happy to hear that. We will catch you tomorrow for season two, episode four, Garden of Bones. And uh, in the meantime, of course, you can always find us at all the places previously listened. And if you have anything that you would like us to discuss about the show, um, send it to us. You can hit us up on any of those social platforms. You can also email us if you would like to, Thrones and Scones, spell it all out, at gmail.com. And let us know what you'd like to chit-chat about. We'll see if we can't hit that. Guys, we'll catch you uh, tomorrow. You down with GOT? Yeah, yeah you, you know, know me. 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 So I will, uh, I will say... Thankfully, I made the right choice, but earlier this week, when uh, when I was still at my parents uh, through Monday, so when we recorded for Monday, I was in the fridge, because I didn't have a scone, it wasn't my day, and I was looking around, trying to find what I could possibly eat. I was very hungry, and I found an entire pumpkin pie in my oh, parents' shit. fridge, and it looked good. Like I was like, oh yeah, this pumpkin pie looks looks good, but when was this met? Why would my mom make a pumpkin pie? She's, no she's not just trying to bake for no reason. And so I got it in my head that it's either fresh and like she made it for me to eat or it's from Christmas. But it looked so good, so pure. So I looked it up. I was like, maybe pumpkin pie lasts for a long time. No, it lasts for three days <laughs> in the fridge. And so I almost, I, did, I went so far as to take the plastic wrap off of it and smell it. it smelled fine. And I was like, I, I would really like to eat this. I did not. And then we recorded and then... Uh, <laughs> up and talked to my mom and i was like uh that pumpkin pie what's what's up with it and she's like oh yeah yeah no that's from <laughs> that's from christmas don't eat it and so it was almost another week we we're gonna go for two in a row here of me just having food poisoning as we're <laughs> recording <shitting> your <laughs> <Yeah>. brains up <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thankfully narrowly avoided it it might have been worth it though it looks so good oh pumpkin's the worst i'm sorry Ugh. what yeah you don't like pumpkin pie? I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not a pumpkin pie fan. I'm definitely not a pumpkin latte fan. And to be honest, even pumpkin beer. Now, so some pumpkin beers though are more spiced than sweet. I don't like, I don't like the sweetness. So it's really? it's it's so hilarious to me. I would I would peg you as exceedingly basic, and now you're telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So fine. Let's play the the game of pies here. Number one pie. Key lime pie, hands down. Easy. No. Done. Oh, get out incorrect. of my head. No. Fuck? It is like the incorrect. perfect balance of like sweet and tart and that with a graham cracker crust, the only yeah. crust you can have. You're and like, mm, I want this I want this mousse to taste like it's gone off. How do we do that? <laughs> yeah. So are you no. wait, are you not a fruit pie then or do you like Pumpkin oh. pie is the number one pie. Oh, that's I mean, disgusting. I, I think but... apple pie is the number one pie. Uh, yeah. Now, wait, have you ever had apple pie with cinnamon ice cream? Ooh, no. Oh, fuck, that shit is the best. So, Jeremy, you're saying these things about these pies, and your your argument was that pumpkin, you don't like the sweetness from the pumpkin, but pumpkin is not is not nearly as sweet as you're going to get with the those other fruit pies, like apple pie. Really, with key lime? See, I don't think key lime pie is sweet at all. I think it's tart, and I like I was tart. saying apple pie. Oh no! I mean, I I mean, I like I think apple pie is fine, but I don't like apple pie when it's super sweet. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and I like a lot of apple. 
I don't like it where it's like that, what is that, gel filling sure, shit sure. in there? Mm-hmm. I'm biased. I'm not a big pie guy to begin with. I don't like You're not the a fruit. big dessert I don't, person, I don't like though. the fruit. That is true. I don't like the fruit-based pies, but for some reason, pumpkin pie does it for me. I'm into it. <laughs> did you know? <laughs> did you guys know? Um, most of the pumpkin pie is actually, like, the pumpkin you get in a can, like, 98% of it is, is squash because it's cheaper and people can't tell the difference. Yeah, didn't even know. That doesn't surprise me. So you're just eating squash pie, which doesn't sound great. Yeah, it's uh, not as appetizing sound- <laughs> sounding. <laughs> Would you guys like some squash pie? I think <laughs> I might I might just pass today, actually. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, fine. Hans, you're really not big into desserts no, at all? No, I'm really not. What's your, like, if, you, if you're like, all right, today is the day... I got that sweet tooth once once a year. It's come around. What do you eat? Yeah, so uh, I do like pumpkin pie once a year. Well, twice a year, Thanksgiving and Christmas usually. Sure, sure. And then uh, that's a good one. <clears throat> uh, my one of my favorite sweets uh, is it's gonna it's kind of an interesting one. So I don't like chocolate. I don't I, I mean, ever. I know you guys <laughs> know this about me, but I don't like chocolate. But uh, sh- so I like cookies, but sugar cookies are always a little bit too sweet for me. They put too, there's too much sugar, too much going on with the sugar cookie. So my favorite cookie of all times is actually the a chocolate is chocolate chip cookie without the chocolate chips because the <laughs> dough is less sweet because they bank on the chocolate being so much sweeter. I do remember we've had this conversation, but I blocked it out of my mind because it was stupid. It's the stupidest <laughs> no, thing you've ever no. heard. Have you ever it's had that not. chocolate chip cookie without chocolate chips in it? No, because it's not no. a chocolate chip cookie. Well, it's like, I, oh yeah, I think I did once when I fucked up the recipe and then was mad for the rest of the day. Like, yeah, sure. I just remember Hans like liking, and I'm another uh, fruit or whatever a dessert. I'm not, I'm not a big banana person. Like banana oh. bread, none of that like does much for me. But like banana pudding sounds like the worst idea to me. And I remember Hans like liking that too. It's so like, good. Yeah, like banana has... pudding's not bad. I'm a big okay. Other sweet, totally forgot to mention creme brulee. Oh, creme brulee is, is next great. levels. But the, I don't understand you now because that's just sugar. Yeah, that one. Just sugar pug- yep. pudding with burnt sugar yep. on top. That's my that's my one exception. <laughs> Fair enough. And when you can find like a creme brulee where they do like a coffee flavor, that shit is. Ooh, ooh. Girl. I like a little. I like a little fruit on top. There you go. I like an espresso bean on top. Mm. <laughs> But if we're talking about all superior sweet baked goods, well, the scone obviously. is obviously. Oh, well, I, mean, I just didn't want to bring scones up because people already get at us that we talk about the scones too much. Yeah, right. show, well, yeah, I know, but I mean, they should know when they're getting in, They should know when they're getting into this episode that this is really. A, I mean, this we try to keep it fifty fifty on Thrones and Scones, but we fail pretty badly. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> we haven't even talked about, about savory scones. Scones. The, scones always, the scones always take center stage. There, I'm sorry. Do you mean biscuits? <laughs> no, no, I don't. That's the problem. Clearly, you haven't done enough sconing in your life. Yeah. One of these days, we're really going to have to define the line between the uh, the mass audience that we have created and who really is a throner and who's a sconer. But it's a, it's a topic for another day, I think. How do you even draw that line, you know? Do you, do you have people vote? I'm not sure, I think. But when you do draw the line, you draw, you, you, we figure out a way, you draw the line, and then you fight to the death. <laughs> I know where you two stand, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> but uh, with your with your uh, excessive scone consumption, I feel like I could take you. You know, you got all that you got all that butter sitting in you. I got I am nimble. <laughs> got, got my throat needle punches. Go for the go true. for the picel scissor yeah, kick. That's <laughs> true. And we and our, we no, immediately Brian spear the we, shit out of people. And we imme- our mouths immediately get dry. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> the pastry that brings you cotton.